Welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft and isn't it just perfect that I have two rockets on me right now. The objective of today's episode is to end up with tons and tons of rockets and be able to install some rocket stations around the place. That bit's going to be interesting. That idea literally just popped into my head. So hopefully it won't be too difficult. I am not in a good position to start this. I'll tell you what, that's absolutely fine. I want to start this episode off first of all by saying thank you for all the feedback on the last one. Every now and then, you know, you're just, you're just doing your thing, you turn up, you play, you make videos, and every now and then you hit gold and you don't even realise it. Uh, people absolutely loved the last episode. The prank was really, really well received, and so was the administration stuff. Seems a lot of you really liked that because it gave you a unique view of the server, you know, where all the players have been and seeing it from a different perspective, which is always uh, a good thing, isn't it? So anyway, down on this floor, I've been walking around it, thinking about how I'm going to start today's episode, and I've just noticed how kind of bland these hallways are, right? There's not a lot going on here, but when you come around to this one, that little gap on the side, and there being a different colour back there, that really brings things to life. And what we're going to do is open up the second part on this floor. We're going to be ripping out all of these blocks right here and getting to work on what's going to be going behind it. And interestingly enough, we have uh, a mine shaft here. And I believe that this mine shaft will lead us to something that might be in the way. Is it around this corner? Is it down here over there? Aha! This is it. <laughs> okay, so what we want to do is we want to have a hallway like we did at the front because now that we've started this theme of having like a coloured hallway leading into another room of course that's going to be the dominant thing right so we want to have a hallway like this and a farm back there and because of that item elevator we are going to be squeezed for space <laughs> which is slightly alarming to me now there's another thing we're going to be doing this episode as well which will also cause a squeeze for space we're going to be hiring Mr. Cub Fan. we're going to be heading over to the Hermitcraft communal area and we're going to be putting in a request at Cub Fan's shop to come over here and build a room for us now he's very good at building with colour which is something I'm not too adventurous with I like to just stick with you know one or two colours on each floor of our base right and over here we've got the jukebox room, and this is directly above where I was just digging. In fact, you can see uh, the floor below. So there's going to be limited space here as well. So after we've built our farm down there, we're then going to be able to say to Cub Fan, hey, this is how much space you've got, because above here... Uh, you can see there's glowstone. That is the floor of all the sorting system up above. Now, I'm not breaking any of the redstone because I built it all on those stone bricks. So you can see that there is limited space to work with around here as well. So I think the way for me to get going here is to start digging down below, first of all, and take care of that. And actually, I can jump down here nice and easy. We're going to be digging out this space down here and figuring out what we've got to work with. I've been a little bit worried we wouldn't be able to do this, but it's all looking really good at the moment. We're going to be able to have a hallway at the front, and the farm we're going to build will fit into this space here. It will be a little bit of a squeeze, but the farm design is nice and adaptable, and I've fallen into a hole. Now, what we could have done is just brought the farm all the way over here to the front because we don't need a corridor like this, but I think we're going to kind of create this as like a, a uniform thing that we copy around all the sides of this. So we will take the layout for this hallway and move it over here and then put the farm behind it. And it doesn't need to be the biggest farm ever. So that is absolutely fine. Peeps, we are going to be building a sugarcane farm. It's never that exciting, but this design is actually really, really awesome. It was made by Nembom MC. I'm going to put a link to his video in the description box, which is really worth watching because you'll learn so much more about this farm than what I'm going to show you is I'm just going to be building it and we're going to be adapting that design so that it is a fair bit smaller and probably not as well I was going to say efficient but efficiency really isn't the deal I tell you what I'm not going to natter on now let's start work on this hallway and we can talk about the farm when we're actually going to build it I've cleared out the space for building the first hallway and a little bit of a problem down here we've got this opening which isn't actually mirrored in that corner over there. I'm going to have to go investigate what we did over there. I think I opened up this bit here, which is what I'll do. We'll put these blocks back because we're going to have a bit of wall sticking out over here. And what it leads to is this ladder here, which will eventually be a part of a minecart elevator, which hopefully I'll have time to hook up today. As I play this game, every single time I start seeing little things that need doing here and there, and I start thinking, we'll do that today, and before you know it, I've run out of time and all of that. So... We should crack on with this first of all and worry about that later. 
Green, green, green. That's that's the colours that we're going to use. We're going to use this green, uh, that green, that one over there. Maybe some of this green as well. <laughs> oh, uh, it's kind of obvious because, yeah, sugar cane be green, right? And you're going to see the sugar cane through this wall. We're actually going to have glassy. You're not going to be able to walk into the farm. Although now that I think about it, you probably could just walk into the farm. Hmm. Maybe I'll put glass here. Maybe I won't. But anyway, I use the grass down here on the bottom because it's going to be nice and bright in this biome. And we don't really get too many opportunities to use that. In fact, I want to silk touch this grass and hold on to it because it might be useful. Going to throw down a few of these blocks just to break up this. And we'll probably throw in some carpet blocks as well, maybe. Yeah, we definitely want to variate it. In fact, this is going to be just like on the ring floor that we have up the top. So we've got that to work from. And I think it's a little bit vivid and maybe a bit much for this floor. I don't know. When it's finished, though, it'll probably look a lot better. Actually, that's kind of cool, I think, because you see it peek through here. The green is nice. This one's got a two-tone thing going on, though. That's the difference. That's what That's what I couldn't put my thumb on. There's a two-tone over there, not on this one. So maybe I should change these walls. I'll think about that, but it's quite likely we'll probably keep it the same. So I think we might have something here. We're going to we're going to turn to the right first of all. For over here you shall see that there is some lime terracotta or clay up the top there. And then we're going to turn to the right again because <laughs> this was our left a moment ago I guess. And we got bone blocks. So I tried a whole bunch of different things and I really felt like the bone blocks was the way to go. Another one that looked really nice was jungle wood, but that was kind of the theme of this area. Plus we actually used it over here as well, didn't we? In fact, that kind of makes this a free tone thing, right? And then that's the same as that. I haven't even thought about what color is going to go up the top. It could actually be the darker clay terracotta, or we could go with the lime again, which apparently I've run out of. Okay, that's fine. So some of that up there, and then you've got like a, a free tone grass thing and your clean bone block. I think that's going to work. We're going to build it on a little bit of larger scale and see if I like this. Well then, let's go and take a look. I gotta say, looking absolutely lovely in here. Now these bone blocks don't really link the sugar cane theme, but the grass and the lime up there does that and the ceiling as well. I gotta say though, these blocks together look absolutely gorgeous. These bone block walls are lovely. Such a nice texture, man. I think if you're building, if you're looking for a theme, this combination right here is something you could use. But anyway, we're done with the entrance. Now we can get onto the technical stuff and start building this sugarcane farm. So this farm is gonna be powered by flying machines. That's right, you didn't mishear me. Flying machines, that's what's gonna harvest the sugarcane in here. So we're just going to lay this out in a simple way, the same way that Nembomb does in his video. And that is to have rows of two wide sugar cane with water in between. Because of course you need water next to the dirt so you can put the sugar cane on it. It's also sort of occurred to me since that we didn't have to do with this with grass. Which is why I originally put grass out here. Because we have grass on the inside. You can put sugar cane on sand. And of course there's that old myth about which one does it grow faster on. I myth busted that just in case you've heard that one and you want to know what the real deal is. So you can go check that out on the myth busting playlist. Um, but what I'm doing right now is just throwing in the grass where the sugar cane is going to go right. And then there's glowstone in between. So that puts light in the room. And above that is where we're going to put some water. And check this out. Look at how many different shulker boxes I've used over here for this project. Like, I figured I would just leave them out every time I grab something from a shulker box. We've literally gone through almost all of them now. And the next one that I want to use is ice, just so I can make a water source, because I got uh, two bucks of water. Well, actually, I just really need one bit of ice, don't I? So we put that there, get ourselves a water source, and now we can bring it across like that. So this is where our water is and our sugar cane is going to go between it is where we will have some leaf blocks. Now the reason that we're using leaves is because they won't get attached to the slime blocks which will be a part of the flying machine and the mechanism that's going to harvest all of the sugar cane as well. I've actually only got 16 sugar canes on me. That is kind of ridiculous. So it goes all the way across like there. Now you can see this comes right the way up to the, um, the glass. And I was thinking I might replace that with leaf blocks, which we're going to put over the top of the water. 
Now the flying machine can actually just have like a regular block on the end of it so you don't have to worry about it sticking to the walls which is kind of important because I pictured us putting lead blocks along the side of this wall here which isn't going to be necessary. It means we also don't have to do it on this side over here as the middle of the flying machine will be in the middle of the farm. So we can actually decorate this with whatever we like and I'm thinking it might be an excuse to use some more bone blocks. However, I am possibly going to run out of those at some point. Oh no, what am I doing here? Actually that makes total sense because I covered that all with leaf blocks. So let's make another water source. And uh, and yeah, so I'm just going to fill up this room with more dirt, more grass and, and keep putting in the glowstone. And I'll be back with you shortly. So our dirt has mostly grown into grass, in fact I think all of it has, I've put down the water and the leaves and I've been growing the sugarcane and I've been doing this manually as well, coming in here, picking them out one at a time and plopping them down and I've just had to be away from the computer for a moment and loads of it has grown as you can see. Got to be careful though to make sure that we don't miss any gaps, I missed a couple of over here which is not good. And we're not going to harvest the rest of it because we're about to make the flying machine that will harvest it. This design is so awesome. It's going to go back and forth across. It's going to knock off all of the sugar cane and it will drop onto the grass so that we can collect it. But we'll come back to that in a moment. So this thing over here, which is hard to look at, that's an observer block. It's got a furnace behind it with redstone on top. So when it receives an update, it will power that. And we have here a repeater with a trapdoor and that trapdoor will probably update the observer block that's going to come across. So this little gap right here is what the flying machine I believe is going to sort of find its way into and then all the way over at the other side of the room just over by one block you can see a very similar setup except that observer block is rotated a different way. So if we go around the back here you will see that this is the same kind of dealio as before. I've got a feeling I made a big mistake here. This ain't in the right place. I certainly got this wrong, so that trapdoor was on top of this thing, that's the flying machine, those two blocks right there. That should actually be behind here, and this is powered by a redstone torch by the way, so when we press the button I believe this thing is going to fly. So in order to believe it, uh, to build it, believe it, <laughs> we're going to need two sticky pistons, some slime blocks and some lime stained glass. The glass is the bit that's going to go on the end, that could basically be any block and we start off with a sticky piston in this gap and then I guess we probably want to put I think that's got to go there so then the other one's got to face that way right so we'll put in a temporary block and now the rest of building this is easy I'm pretty sure that is correct that looks correct to me so then what we do is we put in our slime blocks now these are going to be touching the leaf blocks above and below that's not going to be a problem the one on the end though it would be so that's where we put that block and do the same thing on this side and I believe it is now ready to go and I'm excited I can't wait to see this thing in action so let's press the button man I really want this to work <laughs> and it doesn't even start what have I missed what have I done wrong I thought I got everything right that's definitely pointing into there. So this should have changed and that should have definitely sent an update down a block. Oh, I know what I've done. Okay, so actually, yeah, that's a little bit silly. I've built it in line with this quite instinctively. So if we break this here with Silk Touch so we can pick it back up, that should actually be one block behind. And now when we press the button, hey, off it goes. Okay, let's watch it do its thing also good so far there probably needs to be a gap above this thing which is important because there's already is a gap and now it's going to harvest the sugar cane and it's going to leave behind these blocks they're not actually there you see nothing dropped but the important thing to observe is if the sugar cane lands on the leaves you can see that some of it has there let's hop out of the way because it should then get knocked off when it comes back right and then there'll be nothing left on top of the leaf blocks, which makes it lossless, which is just terrific. Also, it successfully made its way over here and, uh, of course, went back again. So that's really nice to know. And now we're left with loads of silly ghost blocks. If I relog, those will disappear. It's kind of ridiculous just how many it's left and how it's sort of left them in even intervals almost. Like it's always just before the leaf blocks. That is peculiar, isn't it? Oh, that time it's on top of them. Well... These things, oh, I guess I'm going to have to do that. I could relog. That'll fix it. And there you go. They're not actually there. So now what I'm going to do is walk around and grab all of the sugar cane so that we can plant some more and get it all growing. So I've replanted. We'll slowly get this thing filled up over time. And now I'm just looking at a couple of things, actually. I was thinking about the aesthetics. And what we could do on the inside here 
is use the stone bricks again. I don't know what material is going to be used for the ceiling, but I was thinking we can't build at this height. That is not true. It's just in the middle where those observer blocks go that it's probably a not good idea to have some blocks here, right? Otherwise, it will send possibly additional updates, which could actually be no good at all. Now, that tried to connect to that thing, didn't it? Yeah, that's going to make it look nice and clean, and then we'll have a material up here, and we'll probably put some stone bricks on the other side. This glass, by the way, I think it's actually going to be cool, because it's right in the very center, which kind of makes sense, because I've aligned the item elevator with the center of what's been built above. So it's aligned with this part of the room, and basically it means you could look over, and on occasions you would just see some items going up. Well, actually, no, that's for the wool farm, isn't it? So if I'm over there doing the wool thing then I'm not going to be over here looking at this. Anyway, I've decided that that can stay in the room and we're not going to put leaves on it or anything like that. So I messed about with the redstone that we just built over the back here. It now gets activated from the side and the reason I believe there was an observer block here was so that this could automatically go back and forth over and over again. Let's say for some reason you needed stupid amounts of this, there is a way to do that. So I've changed it so that that's going to get activated when this comes back but uh, you're going to power it from down here like normal. And the reason that we would need an independent signal to activate is because we're going to have to power a minecart hopper to go underneath and collect all of this up. And this is when I realized that I should have done this bit first, actually, because if I tear out any of this grass, the water is going to flow down, which makes placing rails kind of difficult, as you can imagine. So we've got to place the rails from down here, and that is going to be super tricky. So let's try and do this together. This circuit should be relatively easy, and every so often we're going to have redstone blocks as well. Let's put that there, so that's going to be a powered rail. Now the mistake would be to bring this further across, because then the rails would connect together. So as long as we always stay ahead, we should be alright. i also got no idea like how big this gap is between each powered rail, or how big it needs to be. And that needs to be a rail, not a block. So we can place a little bit more over on this side. Now this is going to come from over here. So we need to go, oh my goodness me, it goes back. And look at what I found. We are cutting things really close. I hope this glowstone doesn't affect the ice down there. Kind of looks far away, kind of looks like that shouldn't be a problem. So this is where it's going to come in from. Let's put a powered rail there, then somewhere back here, well in fact we'll just put it right here, we'll have another rail. This one won't be powered, so this is where the minecart hop is going to sit. And then when we give it a signal, it's going to go off on its way. So it gets powered and it goes around the corner. I need to put in those rails. I don't think this is actually going to be that big of a deal. Until I saw this thing, this is actually going to get in the way, isn't it? Because once this is connected up, it means that building the next rail going around the corner isn't going to be a problem. And no point when we place these are they going to try and connect with those. It's just a case of this is now in the way. When it comes to this thing, I think there's no way of avoiding a rebuild here. Something has got to change, and it probably means that this thing will go in that direction a little bit. It'll come up, and then there'll be like a second bit that takes it up to the top, because we can't push it any further back in that direction, I remember. Things are always a tight squeeze in these bases, aren't they? And we're almost done down here. As you can see, I've been doing some preparation just to make all of this super easy to place. And now all I've got to do is go along and dig out all of this. Today has been one of those days where I keep getting pulled away from the computer and I've been interrupted so many times of making this episode and now I come back and all of the sugarcane has grown all the way. It hasn't been that long, but apparently so because it's all grown to the top. And by the way, I've been doing some testing. The sugarcane will actually fall into this space here. Not a lot of it, but it means that we could patch it up with some glass or just leave it open, which really wouldn't be a problem. I don't mind losing a few bits here and there. Now down below the rails are all in place. This wasn't uh, a problem at all really. I thought it was going to be a real pain but actually it was quite straightforward and simple. Now if we head up top we will eventually have some redstone over here that's going to move those items into a collection chest. And remember at the beginning of the video I said that we were going to be building a is it a firework rocket? I think it might have been actually what I said. And it is a firework rocket, but you know, the boost rockets for flying. We're going to build a factory for that. So we need sugar cane, we need a crafting bench, and we need gunpowder. Now we've already got a gunpowder farm, and we're going to bring the items up to here. So how I want this thing to look is basically something like this. There'll be loads of chests back there, and this will be like a little station for coming along and crafting this up. I don't know why I picked out slabs. What we actually want are stairs. 
and we kind of want them to be facing the other way. Well, I'll sort that out in a moment, but yeah, we'll have a little thing here that you can walk up to and uh, do this with. Open it up and get your gunpowder, get your sugar cane. And of course, we have a gunpowder farm, so let's go and check that out. So I've been recording, I've been showing you how I've hooked up the gunpowder to this chest here and the sugar cane there. And then I've just decided to delete a whole bunch of footage. It wasn't terribly exciting. I was trundling along, I was fumbling with the redstone a little bit, and then I realised that I hadn't done this as well, and I'm kind of running out of time to get this episode together for you. And it just feels like, now nah, let's scale this back a little bit, because it was getting kind of boring, doing the same thing over and over again. So you can see we've got the sugar cane and the gunpowder hooked up. I'll show you the behind the scenes on that another time, as we've got to go back there and finish the sugar cane room where all of it grows. We've got a little bit more redstoning to do, but we have done enough to make the room up above ready for Cub Van to come over and decorate. So we'll come back to that in the future. And do you know what? I can't remember the last time that I ever deleted a bunch of footage like that. It's probably been years. Usually when I record, I know what I'm doing and I know if something's going to be in the video or not, right? It's that straightforward. Whereas this time I was getting further and further into it thinking, man, it's just one thing after another. You know, I'm doing this bit of redstone, then I realize that's wrong. We redo it and it was getting kind of boring. I'm actually glad that I decided to delete it because I don't think it would have been terribly exciting for all of you. So right now what I'm doing is just clearing out this mo room to make it really obvious to Cub Fan where his limitations are. As you can see, there is the room above and you can see this down here. And our sugarcane farm is back over in that direction. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem unless Cub Fan decides to go further back in that direction. If he does, um, I'll, have to, I'll have to leave him some more detailed instructions really on, on how much space he's got to work with here. So we are back in the most beautiful Minecraft build of all time. And I think all of the torches have been punched away from the ceiling, which just makes this place so dramatic now. And actually, we're walking across pretty much straight over to Cub Fan's one, which is right there. I think a few more shops have popped up around the place. I can see something going on over in that direction. I believe there's been a couple of things built somewhere over there. Oh, and there's some sort of something going on up there, that's for sure. We'll have to come back here and check things out in detail next time, I think. Maybe next episode, maybe the one after that. I'm not sure what the plan is, but we need to get in here and uh, leave a request. Oh yeah, and the floor changes. I love that. <laughs> it's ever so cool. Right. Orders. Read me, and then we've got a book to fill out. Excellent. Alright, so I've signed this sucker. Uh, dear Cub Fan, I have space for a room in my base known as the Record Room. It's where I wanted to show off all the records I've collected. However, I think your colourful decorative skills would make it far more interesting than I ever could, PTO. Uh, all I ask is that the room has 11 item frames for me to hang my collection in. Thanks for reading. I hope you accept my request, Asuma. There we go. Very good. I'm missing out, people. There's lots going on in this area. We're going to have to come back and check that another time because I've got to wrap this episode up. And I'm going to leave you with a question. I'd love it if you'd leave a comment. Uh, just how did this episode compare to the last? You know, like I said, sometimes you strike gold and you come up with something really good. And I feel like today I had so many interruptions while I was recording. I just kind of lost my flow a little bit. So we'll have to bring it back with a stronger episode next time, that's for sure. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this one, please do leave a like as always. Thank you for your support. And I'll see you in the next one. So ciao for now. Bye-bye.